your son? Yes. Right, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Rivera, you may continue with your reading. Thank, thank you, Hunter. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Um, Weiss. Let's uh, start off where um, where you were being cross-examined by the uh, defense attorney, and he asked you about the uh, service area near Paraquats. Remember testifying about that? Yes, I do. Okay. As you sit there right now, do you recall where that service area near Paraquats was that you made the phone call to your mother? I don't recall. Can you even give us a, a time frame, how long it took to get to that service area from, Par from the uh, Paraquats Bay Road? Mm. I mean, if you know without guessing. No, I don't. Other than the call you made to your mother by the uh, Paraquats area, what if any other call did you make on the road, on the drive to the Haiku residence? Um, I hadn't made any other phone calls. And as you sit there right now, are you familiar where the K-9 Peninsula is? Um, a little bit, yes. And, and where, as you sit there right now, can you tell us where that is? Do you know where the, oh, I'm sorry, let me strike that, John. Do you know where that is in relation to the Paraquats Bay? Not exactly. I, I believe it's um, before, uh, closer to Haiku, though. Uh, Jack moved to strike lack of foundation. <coughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, my question to you is do you know where the peninsula, um, where the Canine Peninsula is in relation to the Paraquats Bay? No, I don't. Yeah, no, I would that was stricken. Yeah, um, you objected, I struck, so. Oh, and there was an answer? Or an answer to uh, that question. <coughs> oh, I guess we'll need to make sure we have an answer for the record. Uh, uh, do you know where the peninsula, where the Cayman Peninsula is in relation to Paraguay State? No, I don't. <clears throat> and when you said you consulted or you spoke with map people, where did this occur? Um, the map people I was referring to were just a. Uh, Searchers that okay, were helping. My question, please listen. Where did this occur? Not who were they? Um, it was kind of all over. Um, wherever we were searching, I had asked uh, people to help me out with it. Okay. Um, on cross examination, you're asked by the defense attorney about the map people you consulted with and do you recall testifying that you consulted with them at the Haiku Community Center? That was one of the spots. Okay. When you consulted them at the Haiku Community Center, which area, if any, were you consulting them about? Um, I, I was asking them if they knew about the ping spot. And with this, what, what day would have this been? What day? Um, right. I believe at the Haiku Community Center it would have been the 12th. Was this the, the day before the you found the items? Um, it, I was asking quite a few people um, throughout from the 10th to the 13th. Okay, my question to you, Ms. Weiss, though, we're talking specifically about the Haiku Community Center, when you told the defense lawyer you consulted with MAP people, mm -hmm. okay? And you just answered it was about the pin spot. Yes. So when did you consult with the MAP people at the Haiku Community Center in relation or with respect to the pink spot? No, Jack, that's an answer. She answered 212. The objection is overruled. You may answer the question. Please answer that question. Um, and yes, it should have been on the 12th. Mm. 
Now, one of the questions you were asked is whether or not you need surface in order to get a ping on the Life 360. Remember being asked that on cross-examination? Yes. And what was your answer, or what is your answer? Um, I'm actually not too sure how the app works. Uh, I thought that you did need service. Like a foundation from there? The, well, as to... The uh, second sentence of the response, I'll sustain the objection first. Is there explanation that she does not know how it actually works? Move to show them the second part. Uh, as to the second sentence, uh, uh, I will sustain the objection and strike that, uh, strike that portion of the response. That's fine, Your Now, what um, when the when the defense lawyer questioned you on cross examination, asking you at the paraquats area when you folks had uh, discovered those items, he asked you at some part whether it, it became pitch dark or pitch black. Remember you asking that question? Yes. Okay. What is your definition, Ms. Weiss, of it being pitch dark or pitch black? Um, you can't really see in front of me. So when you folks are walking to, going back to Molly's car, did you folks have flashlights? I know I didn't. Um, I'm not too sure about Molly, though. Okay, let's talk about you, though. Did you have a flashlight? No, not me. Did your phone have a flashlight? It did. Did you use a flashlight on your phone? You want to object as to the leading questions? You know, this is preliminary question of fact. It's a point. Well, uh, the objection is over. You may ask Um, going back up, I don't think I was using my phone, uh, my phone light. So what was a lighting light if you weren't using your phone light as you're going back to Molly's truck? Um, it was darker, but the moon did have, uh, I could see with the moonlight on occasion though, but I was following um, everyone else, so I was able to see them and where they were going. Did you at any point ever get lost oh on the way God. back to the truck? No. And at that time, do you recall, while you were following the others back to the truck, what if anything did you have in your hands? I didn't have anything uh, besides my phone. Do you recall, if at all, did you bump into anything or hit anything on the way back to the truck? How did you make it back to the truck? Um, we walked there. What, if any, help did you need to walk back to the truck? None. And when you told the defense lawyer that it was pitch dark on the way back to the truck. Please describe the pitch dark for us. <coughs> um, meaning the sun went down. Um, there were minimal stars, but the, I could see with the moonlight. Um, but other than that, everything else was pretty dark. Now, you remember being asked by the defense lawyer about the last time you saw um, the DVD that you found at the Paraquats area? Yes. Okay. Where was the last time you saw that DVD? Um, I had seen it in Charlie's car. Uh, she had put it in her glove box. And with respect to the blanket, you mentioned you had seen it um, at Charlie's place before, is that correct? 
Um, yes. All right. Had you seen it in any other place besides Charlie's place before? Yes, um, I had seen it in her car. Um, I had seen it at my house. Um, I had seen it at whenever we took the dogs for a run. And as you sit there right now, do you remember the last place you saw the green blanket? The last time I saw it, I believe it was in her house. Now, you also mentioned before lunch that at the river area by, by the uh, Paraquats area that you testified to earlier, Max went, continued up the river towards the bridge. Remember saying that? Yes. Okay. Did you go up there to the bridge? No, I didn't make it all the way up. I'm talking about you now, not, not anyone else. Yeah. Right. Did you go up to the bridge? No, not me personally. Could you please describe your emotions at that time, if any? I was Is that just the relevance? The objection is only please, please tell us your emotions, Ms. Weiss, at that time. Your Honor, this is beyond the scope of cross. Uh, respectfully, I, I, I consider it to be within the scope because it relates to uh, her state at the time in relation to the kinds of details that were covered in cross examination. That's why I consider it this whole process. Relative to her emotions? Yes. Okay, yes. Her emotional state at the time, yes. Okay, so, Ms. Weiss, please tell us your emotional state at the time that Max went up to the bridge by the river area. I was scared. I didn't know what I was doing. I really just, I don't know, I was scared. And emotionally, can you describe how you were? No. The objection asked an answer. The objection is over. Please tell us. Um. Uh, I don't. I'm sorry. Would you repeat it? Could you please describe how you were feeling emotionally? You said you were scared. The question is, how were you feeling emotionally? Um, I was definitely unstable. Uh, I, all I could think was why her clothes were in a forest. Now, at some point, you testified that you, Max, and Molly arrived at the high, at your haiku um, property. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, let me step back a bit. Before you folks went out to the Paraquats area, you mentioned that Max had driven his truck to the haiku community center. Um, yeah, I believe he was driving his truck around during the search uh, that day and he parked it at the Haiku Community Center. Okay. At any time, did you see his black truck at your property that night? Um, I actually don't recall which cars were at the property that night. And when you got home that night, um, again, we're talking about Thursday night after these items were uh, recovered from the Paraquats area. Um, what, if any, what if any of these items did you handle once you got home to the haiku? I didn't uh, handle any of them. Let me get back um, to, to the to the map people we were talking about. When you spoke with the map people the day before, this would be uh, Wednesday the 12th, I believe. Okay. 
did you have in your mind the name of an area that you wanted to look at? Um, no, I didn't. I don't believe I had the name of an area. And at any time, or when did you get when did you get the name of the Paraquats area? Check calls for hearsay. You can please tell us when. I, I don't want you to tell us what was said, but when did you get that name? I believe it was on Thursday, on the 13th. And without telling us what was said, do you recall who you, the person or persons you may have spoken with? When you used the term map people, were they, if at all, map people? No, they weren't actual map people. Now, on cross-examination, you also discussed the area that you and Brooke saw the, the defendant coming up from with his forerunner and the headlights on. Remember talking about that? Yes. And which area is this? Um, that, that would have been Paraquats. Is that the same area that Molly went down with her truck? Yes. Okay, now, do you recall the defense lawyer asking you questions which compared the blue tank top with polka dots and a, I guess, a blue dress with white dots? Um, it's, I do remember that, but it's a black dress. Oh, I'm sorry, black dress, okay. Um, I'm, I want to show you what has already been admitted into evidence of states exhibits 71 and 72 and your honor because they are in evidence um, the state will be uh, first of all permission to publish permission okay and the state is going to ask permission to publish it side by side at the same time okay john is up there um your honor may may um Miss White stepped down so she can indicate to the yes, photographs. Okay, um, Miss White standing to the side so that so we all can see this. I want to turn your attention to State's Exhibit 71 first. So that's the photograph to the left. You see that? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you see? Well, first of all, this is of Charlie Scott. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. What is she wearing in this photograph? Um, she's wearing her black polka dot kind of dress. And, and have you seen her in this dress before? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, would you ever mistake that for the blue tank top? No, I wouldn't. And turning your attention to State's Exhibit 72, can you point to that with the, with the uh, pointer? And for the record, um, Ms. Weiss is indicating to the photograph from the right of the screen. Now. In States Exhibit 72, um, do you see the blue tank top with the white polka dots? Yes. Okay. Now, do you testify, I think the word you used was uh, with the defense lawyer that there was scrunchies on the side? Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with the uh, word, and I'll probably say this wrong, um, ruching? Or gathers? Um, yes, gathers. Okay. When you say scrunchies, what do you mean by that? Um, like 
it, it bunches up, uh, and it was only on the bottom, um, and it kind of makes it stretchy as well. Okay. And that's what you observed on the blue tank top with the white polka dots. <laughs> now, I want to turn your attention to the corner, I guess the right-hand corner of Stacy Civit 72, which is, which is in evidence. There's, it looks like there's a, a, a television monitor there. Do you see that? Yes. And right now you're indicating to a, what appears to be like a television monitor to the upper right-hand corner of six exhibit 72, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. What, what, what do you see there? Um, it's the movie that we were playing. And what movie is that? The Cloudy with the Drinks of Nipples. Is that the same movie you guys are watching that night that you saw on, on uh, February 9th? Yes. Okay, you can have a seat, thank you. Now, you were also asked on cross-examination by the defense lawyer about walking Charlie out that, I guess, Sunday night on February 9th from, I guess, Brooks residence. Do you recall testifying about that? Yes. Could you please tell us what you observed physically about Charlie as you were pardoned? If anything. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Can we, can we take the pictures down, Your Honor? Oh, sure, yeah. We're seeing the Okay. Uh, can you answer the question, please? Uh, yeah, she was. She was happy. We said goodbye, um, just like any other goodbye. Expect to see each other tomorrow. Okay. Have you ever seen or observed your sister Charlie being? Tired or fatigued? I have. Okay. What, if any, observation did you make with, with respect to that that night? She was tired. Um, I, I feel like she was very happy that it kind of overruled that in a way, but she was definitely tired. And what did you observe about her where you can say that she was definitely tired? Um, I mean, she had stated it to us. Uh, but I mean, I knew that she was working all day that day, uh, all day, sorry. Um, she was working at the Hoobie that day, and I know that she was uh, doing random haircuts, so I knew she was tired from that, too. Okay, um, last series of questions, uh, Ms. Weiss. Uh, you remember being asked by the criminal defense lawyer about a voicemail you may have heard or were you able to identify that was, it was the defendant? Yes. And who, who provided this voicemail to you? Uh, Charlie was playing it. And approximately when, if you can tell us, when did you hear this in relations to February 9th, 2014? Mm -hmm. I was asked and answered in direct when, when that happened. Uh, I believe, I know it was in 2013, um, but I can't recall if it was in October, November, December. It's one of those months. Okay. And can you please describe, if you can, the defendant's tone of voice? on the voicemail. Um, kind of irritated. Check, that was asked, to, asked and answered in direct. The injury is Okay, please, please tell us what you recall with respect to the defendant's tone of voice. Um, he, he sounded kind of irritated, like he just wanted to, to, um, he just, he wanted to make sure everything was going okay, I guess, going all right, like the way that they had last left it. 
When you say the last left it, what do you mean by that? Um, I'm guessing that the last time that they saw each other, they had made an agreement with something, and it just sounded like he was irritated that it hadn't gone. Someone to object to the word, to the use of the word irritated, like a foundation. The objection is sustained. Want to strike? Granted. With respect to that word, right, Your Honor? Okay. When you please describe the tone of voice, if you can, for us that you heard, um, you can fit it without drawing a conclusion. But describe the tone of voice. Yes, this was asked and answered in direct. I did not ask questions about that. The tone of voice. You know, questions were beyond the scope of cross. Questions were asked about the message itself. The, uh, I'll sustain the objection to this question as being beyond the scope. fair to say that you had seen Charlie in that blue tank top many times before? Um, in that blue tank top, I hadn't seen her many times. Um, I saw her wear it the, the first time that she bought it. She was showing it off for me, and then the next time was that day, or that night, I guess. Okay, when she was showing it off for you, where was she showing it off for you? Um, in her Makwa house. Okay. You'd agree with me that you weren't with her when you purchased the shirt, were you? No, I wasn't. Okay. You recall talking to Officer Takuchi back on February 13th? Yes. Right? Didn't you tell Officer Takuchi that you had seen her wear that skirt before and you remember Scott purchasing this shirt from Old Navy with two other shirts? Yes. She just testified you weren't with her when she bought that shirt, right? No, I was not. Now, when you testified about getting up to the house, and that you didn't touch anything, wouldn't it be more accurate that your testimony would be that you observed nobody touching anything from the truck? To, uh, objection is the form of the question of being more accurate. That, that was a little bit. I'll withdraw that. I'll withdraw that. The question is withdrawn. Would it be your testimony that everything stayed in the truck? I, I was honestly more focused on Brooke at that point, so I wasn't um, paying attention to what was going on with that. So would it be your testimony that you don't know if everything stayed in the truck then? Um, yeah. Is that yes? Yeah. Okay, well, you remember talking to Detective Hamilton back on March 4th, right? On page 37? Yes. yes. When you were asked by Detective Hamilton about this, wasn't it your answer that um, when he asked you, did you guys left it in the truck or what were you driving? Your response was Judge, that? Uh, I do object to this type of question. <coughs> Proper impeachment if the objection is sustained. Okay, isn't it true that you told Detective Hamilton that you folks left everything in the truck? Um, I believe so, yes. So you actually told him that 
you saw everything left in the truck, right? Um, I guess that is. You know, I, I object um, as to lack of memory of, or, f I'm sorry, foundation as to what she told Detective Hamilton. She just answered, I think, yeah. I'll sustain the objection. She began to answer the question. So, at any rate, <coughs> I'll sustain the objection. You may ask your next question. Yeah. I actually have no further questions. Thank you. Are there any juror questions? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, please. It actually says two slash nine slash slash fourteen. Mr. Thurber. No objection. Mr. Uncle. Uh, no objection. Yeah. This question will be asked. The next jury question form contains one question. It reads, "How long did Charlie stay in the mainland?" Uh, Mr. River. No objection. Mr. If she Uncle. knows. Uh, if she knows, no objection. The next jury question form contains one question. It reads. When Charlie's phone got disconnected that night, parentheses, February 9, close parentheses, were the police informed of its last location? If so, when? Mr. Rivera. No objection if she knows. Mr. Uncle. Um, I object to the lack of foundation. Sustain the objection. Next jury question form contains two questions. The first, reads, in the pictures, the blanket appears to be blood stained. Was it, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, River? You know, the first all like speculation, though. Mr. Uncle. Uh, lack of I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Did anyone check the inside of the abandoned ice box? If not, then why not? Mr. Rivera? You know, is that question number two of that form? I'm sorry? Is that, is that the second question of the, the same form? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Second question on the jury question form. Did anyone check the ice box? Reads, did anyone check the inside of the abandoned ice box? If not, then why not? Okay, um, you're going to ask a compound question. 
object. Uh, uh, Mr. Uppo. No objection. Change my position, or I'll join the state's position on that. All right. I'll sustain your objection. Next jury question form contains uh, three questions. reads, does Phaedra feel the traumatic situation of Charlie's disappearance cloud and blur her mind, uh, comma, memory and recall of past investigations, locations, search, or other details? Mr. Rivera. You know, although that's a good question, there's like too many questions within that question, so I, I don't see how she's going to answer it. Um, Compo. Mr. Oppo. Yeah, I, I'd object on uh, leading compound argumentative. All right, I'll sustain the objections. Next question Does Pedro <laughs> feel like her life was extremely stressful, emo emotional, and unstable throughout the time frame of February 9th to today. Uh, Mr. River. I'm sorry, I, I missed the first part of that. Sure. Uh, does Phaedra feel like her life was extremely stressful, comma, emotional, and unstable throughout the time frame of February 9th to today? Um, no objection based on the questions we had asked earlier. And uh, Mr. Alpo. I object as to leading, argumentative, and compound, and relevance. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Uh, next question. Phaedra was a minor when initially interviewed by authorities in 2014-2015, question mark. Mr. Rivera. No objection. Mr. Opal. <laughs> no objection. This question will be asked. Uh, next, uh, next jury question form contains one question. It reads, who is Zoe? Uh, Mr. Rivera? No objection. Mr. Oppo? No objection. All right, this question will be asked. Next jury question form contains uh, one question. It reads, February 10th evening when you went to with your mother to Charlie's home to look for her did you notice anything unusual or missing from her home Mr. Rivera no objection Mr. Uppo no objection All right, this question will be asked next uh, form contains several questions On the very first line, though, what was being written is not crossed out. So the first question would be, why did Charlie's stepdad not allow, and then it says DEF, uh, defendant, to his home? Uh, Mr. Rivera. Um, you know, I'm not sure if she has that answer, so I would object if it's based on hearsay and speculation. Mr. Oppo? No objection. All right, now there's a follow-up. I guess it's in the same block. It says, what, was it because of defendant's treatment towards 
Charlie and or her family members. I guess those two were intended to go together. Second question: Was it because of the treatment? Yeah. So, with that in mind, uh, is the, the second question only makes sense in relation to the first question. You know, actually, if she knows, I, I don't have an objection. No objection. So these two questions asked at once. The, the question is, why did Charlie's stepdad not let the defendant into the home? Okay, the well, there's two questions. It's why did Charlie's stepdad not allow the defendant to his home? And then there's, it says, was it because of defendant's treatment towards Charlie and or her family members? So I, I have to, my, my position was based on, um, is that one question? You know, it's written uh, with one line separating them, but the second question would have no meaning without the first. If it's all one question, that objective leading the second half. And then, um, Mr. Rivera? Jim, look, actually, I don't have an objection if she knows the answer, or, or the answer to each part of that question or each part of the two questions. Yeah, so I'll check this compound on that. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Uh, next question. Are there any records, uh, information to reflect any anger outbursts or mood swings of defendant's behavior, Mr. Rivera? You know, at this time, um, th that type of evidence would be inadmissible so that I don't think the court's going to allow it anyway. And Mr. Opal? Uh, same objection. All right, the objections are sustained. Who held the rental and or lease agreement to the home Charlie and the defendant shared or in both individuals' names? And there's a follow-up that reads, or I shouldn't say a follow-up, but there's another question that reads, did defendant have and or offer any financial contribution to cooler residents or was it only Charlie contributing it. Would appear that those two can be asked, can be asked independently. So I'll just go with the first one first. Who held the rental slash lease? So I, I read that as and or. So rental and or lease agreement to the home Charlie and the defendant shared or in both individuals' names. No objection, Your Honor. Mr. Uncle. Uh, Jack Black of Foundation. Well, she already testified to that. That she didn't know. No, that Charlie's name. All right, Charlie's I'll sustain name. the objection. And then the next one reads, did the defendant have and or offer any financial contribution to cooler residents or was it only Charlie contributing? No Mr. objection. No objection if she knows the answer. Mr. Up. Lack of foundation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question form. How wide would you say the river was, question mark, at the time you found Charlie's blanket? Mr. Rivera. No objection. Mr. Uncle. No objection. Right, this question will be asked. Next jury question form contains, uh, by the way, that jury question form, I just have one question. Uh, first question on the next jury question form, and this form has three questions. Did defendant ever display anger, outburst, or embarrassment when questioned about his relationship with Charlie? Mr. Rivera. No objection. Mr. Alpo. 
No objection. All right, I just need to ask the parties, is there, um, is there any risk here of any 404B material? Not that I'm aware of. Not that the state's aware of. All right. Uh, there being no objection to the question, the question will be asked. <coughs> uh, next. What made, what made Phaedro believe defendant and Charlie were a couple if not any acts of affection were displayed or verbalized? Mr. Rivera. No objection. Mr. Uncle. Uh, no objection. All right, this question will be asked. Next question, did Charlie mention frustration of the defendant not openly, openly committing and or confirm their relationship? Mr. Uh, Rivera. Uh, I'm going to space on here, say some. I have the state objects. Mr. Oppo. Object on here, say. All right, the objections are sustained. The last jury question form contains the following question. It's kind of long, so let me give you a little while to read it. Two slash nine, so I'll read that as on February 9th. Upon Charlie's departure from Brooks House, testimony was that Charlie was tired but happy. Did she express if she was happy about pregnancy or happiness for where she was heading out to or where she was going to do? Okay. <coughs> Mr. Rivera. Um, you know, that'd be based on hearsay. Just state it objects. Mr. Apple. Uh, defense concurs. Uh, the objections are sustained. All right. Um, we'll have the jury return to the court. Thank you. You want to You can answer the question. You can then face the jurors and answer the question. 
after you're through answering the question, if you would look to me as you're doing right now, uh, I'll take that as a signal that you're finished answering the question. Then I'll go on to the next question. Okay. And then if you want me to reread a question again, just let me know. I'll be happy to do that. Okay. After we go through the questions, I'll see if the attorneys have any follow-up questions for you. All right? Okay. Yeah. The first, uh, first question reads, was Charlie's dog Nala with her before she left that night on February 9, 2014? I actually don't recall if Nala was um, seeing Nala in the car or not. The uh, next question reads, how long did Charlie stay in the mainland? You may answer the question. Um. I believe it was um, maybe around six months. I'm not too positive, but I believe that's about the time. The next question reads, Pedro was a minor when initially interviewed by authorities in 2014, 2015? Question mark, you may answer the question. Yes, I was. All right, next question reads, who is Zoe? You may answer the question. Um, Zoe is Charlie's first dog that she ever had. Or not ever had, but she had her since she was a puppy. All right, the next question reads, on February 10th evening, when you went with her mother to Charlie's home to look for her, did you notice anything unusual or missing from her home? You may answer the question. Um, that was uh, on the let, let me let me read that again. Okay. All right. The question mm -hmm. reads: On February tenth evening, when you went with your mother to Charlie's home to look for her, did you notice anything unusual or missing from her home? You may answer the question. Um, no, I don't don't recall seeing anything missing or moved or anything like that. All right, the next question reads, how wide would you say the river was at the time you found Charlie's blanket? Um, I could, I could probably jump across it. Um, it wasn't too far, maybe like, um, sorry, I don't know about uh, feet, but yeah, I could probably jump across it. The next question reads, did defendant ever display anger, outburst, or embarrassment when questioned about his relationship with Charlie? You may answer the question. Um, not that I recall. The next question reads, what made Phaedra believe defendant and Charlie were a couple if not any acts of affection were displayed or verbalize. You may answer the question. Um, Charlie had told me how much she... Objection. You're sick. All right. I'll, I'll sustain the objection. All right. Move um, we'll, we'll, we'll to strike. Move we'll to strike. Sorry, John. I know there's nothing substantive, but... Okay. All right, uh, the motion to strike is granted. Uh, Mr. Rivera, any follow-up questions? Just a couple of the other. One of the questions asked you, um, Ms. Weiss, is what made you believe the defendant and Charlie were a couple with no acts of affection were observed by you? Now, without telling us what anyone told you, what, if anything, did you observe that made you believe that they were a couple? I don't really recall seeing... Oh, 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 actually, object. It's been asked and answered by the jury question. Here, the answer I'll, I'll overrule the objection. You can answer the question. What, if anything, did you observe between the two that made you believe that they were a couple? There wasn't really anything that I saw that made me believe that they were a couple. And 
Last question. When you and your mother went to Charlie's house um, on the evening of February 10th, what, if anything, did you notice with respect to Zoe? Um, she had uh, no food, no water, and she had shishi in the house, which she never does. She never does? Yeah, she's very good. I'm going to object. That's the lack of foundation. I'll just do that last day. That's the last portion of the yeah. We're going to move to strike, yes. All right. Uh, concerning uh, what, how the dog always acts. She said she never. They, uh, uh, the dog never doing that in the home. Okay. Okay. Answer that portion. Uh, I'll sustain the objection and uh, strike that portion of the response. Thank you, Honey. Um, how familiar are you with Zoe? Um, I would say I'm pretty familiar. I know her pretty well. And what? How is it that you're familiar with Zoe? Um, well, being around Charlie a lot, I was around Zoe. And were you familiar with Zoe's, um, I guess for lack of a better term, potty training habits within the house? Oh, uh, yeah. And can you please describe what you observed with that? She was always very good. Um, she would hold it in until she definitely could not hold it in anymore. And that night, you said you observed what on the floor of Charlie's house um, back on February 10th? It looked like she had she she'd um, actually twice. You don't know for the questions. Yes, sir, I'll go ahead and follow up questions. <clears throat> so, Pedro, um, it sounds like you didn't notice anything out of place when you went to Charlie's residence on the evening of February, or the late night of February 10th. What about the second time you, you folks went there? Um, the second time we went there, we went there uh, super early uh, the next morning, like 1 o'clock. There was still nothing, um, or I mean everything was still intact. Nothing had been moved. Okay, so up to that point in time, and that so do you recall about what time that was? I believe it was uh, around 12 midnight or 1 in the morning. And at that point in time, the TV and all of that was still in place in Charlie's, in Charlie's residence? Yes. <clears throat> Would it be fair to say that if at any time you did hear that Stephen was being violent or expressing anger in, in terms of his conduct to Charlie, would it be fair to say that you would have taken action? There's objections, cause for speculation, it's unfair. Yeah, the objection is Thank you. I don't know the question. Thank you.